The shocking increase in teenage pregnancies is another clear indication of the sad state of affairs in this country. That Namibian men prey on those younger and weaker than themselves? Simply disgusting. I visited a school in Karatura this week and spoke to a principal who has seven pregnant girls attending her school. Uh, you know, when I started as principal at the school in 2014, it was not an issue at all. Uh, there were one or two learners who fell pregnant and they signed and we would, would go out and come back the next year or uh, if they would come back at all. But now it really has become a problem. Uh, last year alone we had 28 girls who fell pregnant and starting at grade 8 from only 13 years of age up to grade 12. This year it is a definite problem again. At, at present we have uh, seven girls pregnant at the moment who have to go and, and give birth at any time. You know, for me it is uh, very frustrating, but the, the policy on, on teenage uh, pregnancies allow them to be in school. They uh, go a month before they have the date of confinement and they come back after uh, a month old. When the baby is a month old, they can come back. Uh, providing that there are some people taking care of the baby at home while these girls are in school. These days I think um, the, girl, the learners have too many rights to begin with. It seems there's nothing that the community is doing. The, the parents don't have answers. Uh, girls are falling pregnant one after the other and nothing is being done. During my research I discovered that poverty is one of the main reasons for girls falling pregnant because they are also falling pregnant not uh, from school boys but from older men. We, we, we have a, a girl who fell pregnant who left uh, school at the, at, at the end of last year in, in November. She was uh, 14 years old being pregnant from a 23 year old man. So I really feel that from the government side they should change the, the rights of the children and these policies allowing them to do as they please. We spoke to activist Rosa Namises about this problem. I am concerned and because I am concerned, um, my take is totally a support to the young girls. We need to turn ourselves and call them back into the warm embrace of our mothers and understanding of our men and support of their brothers. Because um, what is happening now is something that they are involved in, not having clear clarity of their own growth their own biological setting and also of the beauty of the whole sexuality. I also think the churches have actually forgotten their role and their input into this matter. The nation has lost its morals and as a result nobody really focuses on these girls. It's like normal that they can be pregnant, not only that they can be pregnant, that they can be having sex with, that the child has lost their childhood, and especially the girls. And the impregnation of these girls is not by the boys so much. It's by elderly men, them, their fathers, their uncles, their grandfathers, and married men. So I think we have to call a stop to this. How can we do that? What we can do is to empower the girls, not blaming them, providing information, providing support, especially support for the babies, because that's where the baby dumping is coming in. That's where the backstreet abortion is coming in. And that's where four babies, for example, were left this week that we are just talking about this, to die of cold, because there was no care. Social worker Tameka Gao says is just as disturbed by this culture of Namibian men abusing women and girl children. Many of the children that are, that are falling pregnant, these are young, young teenage 
girls that are unsupervised that go out in the night and then they fall trap into this elements of teenage pregnancy and I think within the Namibian context as a social workers it's one of the elements that we need to look at how can we improve emotional intelligence as well as mental intelligence for young teenage girls and looking at how they could take collective actions dealing with this element. Culture and tradition plays a big role. How, how do you, in terms of how do you inform your child on sexual reproductive rights as well as health matters? How informative are you in terms of looking away how traditional practices have been done priorly and how they inflict on the choices that the children make the, today. So as parents, I think we have to be, we have to have an open point of view and looking at how are these children exposed the millennium children, children born in the millennium are exposed to a lot of things. How do we as parents cave and mentor and coach children to take decisions that can set for their well-being and not looking at issues that can force them into taking decisions that are not right, such as peer pressure, whether it is looking for the best cell phone, trying to get the best cell phone, going out to clubbing and etc. So looking at how do we coach and how do we cave or mentor the children into making the right decisions. I also spoke to some of the kids at the school who have pregnant schoolmates and asked them how this affects their learning. I feel really bad because uh, most of the people that get uh, pregnant at a young age don't use, uh, usually concentrate in class. It's because they feel insecure about what others are feeling or thinking about them and they, don't, they tend not to perform well in school. It doesn't really affect me that much, but then it's just a worrisome factor because some of the kids, like it really affects the, if one learner falls pregnant in a class, it affects the whole class, like um, the performance drops and perhaps that person, um, the, the person always absent from school and it really affects us as a whole class. I also spoke to a male social worker and asked him what can be done about this problem. Um, I found that a lot of men are trying um, to be the superhero, trying to impress their, their, their brothers, they pr trying to impress their friends. And uh, I found that people like that's got low self-esteem. And, uh, I'm, uh, you know, it's just terrible to see this, these things happen. I can see it, in a, you know, wherever I'm walking, you can actually see it and witness it from the street, which is terrible, you know. I mean, that is not the role of the real man. The role of the real man should be the one who is setting an example. That to me is the most important. And, and obviously, if you can be spiritual, if you walk the spiritual walk, you know, you should be an example for anybody out there of how God should be, how God should act. And uh, um, I can't believe that there's still men out there who actually portray the wrong image of a man, what a man should be. The man should be the priest of his, of his family. The man should be the one that the daughter can trust, people can look up to, um, you see, and that's what I miss in, in the society nowadays. Because of this worldly, because of this, I want to be the best and I want to show my friends what I can do. Rather be somebody who can be still waiting on God for guidance and be an example, a role model for the family. So that the daughter can exactly see how should the man be which I must marry at some stage.